Hey Hooper, welcome to this week's episode of Yes, I'm a Hoop Teacher. This week is super special and I'm sure I will say that every week, but this Hooper and this Hoop Love Coach is someone who I actually connected with 10 years ago in Tokyo. Now, I didn't know the full extent of this story until I actually met her in Berlin last year at the German Hoop Convention. And she told me that 10 years ago, she emailed me when she was on a trip to Japan to ask if we could somehow get together, if we could somehow find some hoopers. At the time, I believe, and she can correct me if I'm wrong, that she was not a hooper, but she found me somehow, I was hooping in Tokyo, and so she reached out, and my question to her instantly was like, did I reply? And yes, I did. Yay, Deanne. So I got back to her, but somehow things, you know, got all mixed up and we did not meet. But years later, she reached out to me. She did my Hoop Love Coach training and became the first ever Hoop Love Coach in Norway. She has now gone on to do incredible things up there all the way at the top of the planet. She is running, organizing the first ever Norway retreat, which is called Hoop and Hike. And I definitely think that you should check it out. It is happening this year and it was the first retreat last year. And as always, I just have the coolest time chatting to Elizabeth. She is a wealth of creativity and knowledge. When I asked her, what the journey was and how on earth she became a hoop teacher, this is what she had to say. For me, it was, uh, well, it was through traveling that I found hooping. And it was actually in Tokyo back in the days that I accidentally uh, got in touch with you somehow. <laughs> and um, because I was filming an art project. So that was how I got introduced to you. And we never met. And it's it's... That was just a starting point, but I Googled what you were doing and you were like, what? She's teaching hoop dance? What is that? And that looks amazing. And you know, that kind of feeling. And when I get back to Gothenburg where I was living, I started YouTubing, searching on YouTube, and I found this amazing video. And that was the starting point. And then I kept hooping like spontaneously from time to time in the summer, but I kept doing it, but very rarely. And then I just felt that there was something there that I had to keep doing. And uh, being in New York for another art project, I got in touch with the amazing Hoop community. And I guess that was just like, you know, a um, very nice experience to meet all these uh, cool people that were really welcoming. And yeah, that's a, it's a long story, but yeah. Now I'm here in the Arctic, which I moved like four years ago. And that's when I started realizing that I really want to do this. And I guess if you do like a big life lifetime shift, like moving somewhere else, you have also the opportunity to, to go inside and feel like, what do I really want to do? You know, mm. and maybe the path is changing. So that was happened for me. Yes, yeah. so many incredible moments uh, kind of leading up to, to what you're creating now. And yeah, like you said, sometimes we don't realize these chance meetings and, and that was the same for me, just this kind of random encounter that led to another thing that led to another thing that kind of just grew and grew into what it is that we share today. So what I love most about Elizabeth's story and everything that she creates is that she always harnesses the energy of an artist's curiosity. So when she discovered hooping all those years ago, it was her curiosity that that kept her hungry, that kept her asking questions and and finding new ways to develop her hooping and then go on to be a hoop teacher in Norway, uh, build a hoop retreat and continue to expand a community even when you know there were huge hurdles it would have been really tough so i was really curious about what a day in the life of a hoop teacher in norway is like i have to ask though what's a typical day like for a hoop teacher in the arctic <laughs> Well, for me, it's um, I'm I'm a freelancer in everything I do now, so I'm also a guide, a tourist guide, and I take people hiking. And right now, in the winter time, it's snowshoe hike we go out on. So that would be like the first thing I do uh, in the morning. I would go and uh, meet my 
group of tourists and then take them snowshoeing for a couple of hours out in our beautiful nature. So that's uh, another piece in my life that has come together after moving here because I really love to be in the nature and that's why I live where I live. And now I also have a job where I get to share that with people visiting. So it's really a unique job and uh, really grateful to have that job because the meetings you have with people in nature is just, it's beautiful. So that would be like a typical start of my day. And then I will, like, I'm pretty personal in my in my encounters with my tourists. So I do, of course, talk about the other things I do. So sometimes they're like, yeah, so what else do you do when you're finished work? And like, yeah, I actually teach uh, hoop dancing. And then like, what? <laughs> I get the same reaction that most people do. What did you think? You teach... Yeah, I teach hula hooping and then you have to do like this. <laughs> and then people react like this. Oh, you do this. <laughs> so that's like a typical day at, uh, at my other work. So you always have that fun, fun reaction. And then we chat a little bit about hula hooping and people are really excited about meeting a hoop dance teacher. <laughs> Elizabeth is full of inspiring life lessons, but one of the lessons that she really shared was about the connection, the value of connection with others, no matter what part of the planet they're from, what language they speak, coming together in nature and celebrating through activity and joy is something that is so truly valuable. And that's when I asked her was it all of her other passions, you know, her surfing in the Arctic waters, her taking people on snowy adventures? Is that what inspired her to start the first hoop retreat called Hoop and Hike? As a, as a really beginner hooper, I went to Bali and the Sacred Circularity, uh, which was really a nice, amazing, um, yeah, it was a really great experience. And that's when the idea sparked. So it was back in 2015. I was like, yeah, I'm going to create a hoop retreat in Norway and here in Lofoten because this, this place attracts people also. And to get, go to the end of the world, you know, it's like it is an adventure. You have to be in for like an adventure. So, and yeah, combining what I really love. Here, I, I think like hiking, it's been a part of my life, my whole life, because you really want to get up on the mountain to look out on the views and get more, uh, you know, get more views of your life, actually. And also, it just clears your mind and everything becomes a little bit easier if you go out in nature. It just unblocks a lot of, uh, yeah, it unblocks your... Uh, what should I say, what holds you back or everything gets clearer. That's the thing what happens. And combining that with the powerful hooping, it's just, yeah, it's perfect. Perfect mix. Wow. Wow. So what you're saying is if I hike to the end of the earth with my hula hoop <laughs> and you, it's going to blow my mind. <laughs> You know, the next time that I am feeling down or things are just not going right, even the simple things in life that are kind of, you know, making me feel grumpy, I'm just going to watch this interview over and over again because Elizabeth's perspective on life and how she tackles it with so much energy is just supremely inspiring. But I was curious about the hurdles that she faces in terms of being a hoop teacher, not only in this environment, but in an area where hooping is just not that popular. I had I, I I've had times where I'm you know the bridge has been closed because of storm and, and because I have two classes I have one in in Kabelwa, which is where I used to live first and then I have one one hour away so in the winter time yeah it's a uh, it's a bit uh, you know it can be a bit uh, scary sometimes driving but uh, we need we need these activities that's the thing you have a lot of people. Um, they are excited about life up here. So they are into getting into new things, I think. And they're open to testing. And so people have slowly starting to come into my classes. And then the word spreads easily here because we all kind of know each other, even though we are living on many different islands, mm -hmm. all connected by bridges. 
the word spreads. So I think that's how people have gotten into it. And for some people, it has taken two years to actually, before they heard of it, till they actually try it. It may, may have taken them two years. And that's another lesson is just to not give up. And even though I've had courses with only two people when I draw one hour, and it's like, yeah, no, but you know what? I'm still going to do it. And then the next class, I had 10 people. Mm. So, you know, it's just this determination. And also for me, it brings me so much energy, teaching. So every after every class, even though I'm tired before the class, I always go come home with so much more energy. And that's what makes it worth it. That's the thing. So it's like, that's what keeps me going because I see how they are enjoying it and how they are developing their skills and enjoying it and then I myself I, my energy level is always so much higher after a class so, so that's the core thing about it and that what's keep me going so yeah <laughs> was that really surprising to you in the beginning um like sharing pooping and you know despite all the struggles and everything were you kind of surprised how much energy and how much motivation it gave you to keep going yeah I think I think so because it's just I mean I do think I have like the teaching like I I like to teach people like yeah and I like that teaching people teaches me so much and that's also how why I started teaching it like you know if we talk about levels in teaching. I was very beginner when I started teaching but that was the only way to get others to poop with because I was the only one here <laughs> and I was like I want to do more of this but I want to have someone to do it with so okay I'm gonna start teach the little things I know and that's uh yeah it's a good idea to just jump into it and do it actually because there's no point of waiting till you have learned 100 tricks or, you know, you can teach a lot with the basic spinning on the ways one way, other way, and your hands. And that's a good starting point. Yeah, and then, yeah definitely. Yeah. I think um, yeah. a lot of teachers or a lot of hoopers think, oh, I'm, I'm not ready because I just, ha I, I don't know. I have to wait until I'm like a superstar or... I'm like that girl on Instagram or, <laughs> you know, whatever it might be. But I, I love your, I was going to ask you if you had any advice for other teachers and you just said it perfect. Like don't hold yeah. back. And yeah. obviously for you in, um, it was very similar for me in Tokyo too. I wanted more people to hoop with me. So I was like, right, I'm just going to start teaching and sharing and building community that way because it was a personal desire for me also. And then, yeah, like you say, I learned so many other things uh, just from doing it, just going yeah. ahead and not holding back, not waiting till I was perfect. Gosh, I'd still be, I still wouldn't have taught anyone if I was waiting to be perfect. Um, yeah. Do you have other, you're full of wisdom, girl, but do you have other pieces of advice for hoop teachers? Oh, wow. <laughs> I guess that, I mean, that is probably my biggest, uh, advice is just to go for it I'm very much I think that's how I've run my life I jump into things because once you jump into one thing it accelerates something else also and that's how I ended up as a hoop teacher because I've done that in my other in my art projects and in like following my yeah following my gut feeling actually mm -hmm. you know being uh, true to true to myself and honest with myself and like I've gone on on paths because I wanted to and then I felt like okay you know what I'm finished with this now I want to do something else mm -hmm. and I wouldn't have found this way if I hadn't done all these other things first you know yes. so it's 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 the thing about being um, honest to yourself what do you really want to do or what what is your yeah what do you really want to do and just take some time and figure it out and the most the easiest way to figure that out is actually doing stuff trying stuff because you don't 
you don't get there by uh, sitting and writing down or you don't get there by thinking about it. You actually have to just do it. Yes, you heard it right. Jump first and build those wings on the way down. And Elizabeth and I went on to have a chat about how holding back is just stopping so many things in life and moving forward with action is the only way to go. And don't wait, please don't wait until you're ready. Next, I went on to ask Elizabeth what she's most excited about, what's happening next in her life, because we have to remember that the weather up there in Norway is not what it is in most parts of the world. They go through many, many weeks and months of pure darkness. So coming out of the darkness, this is what she's most excited about. I'm just very excited that uh, the energy level is rising after the dark season, because we have one month without any sun uh, and from 7th of January it comes back and then it you really feel it starts rising the energy energy level uh, so the cycle the cycles are visible here and you feel it on your body quite a lot but uh, so now that I'm getting back into life and my energy is here to do more creative stuff again I am I'm working on the next hoop and hike edition, and I'm also have some ideas about uh, combining my my passions, which are like two things I really want to do more of is hooping and surfing. Yes. And I think those two things, like surfing, is such a long process for me. Uh, I'm not like a natural in that, so it has been a long, long process. And but I see that my body is so much stronger from the hooping. Mm. you know my whole the core and everything is so much stronger so it actually makes it easier and I'm more durable when I'm out surfing so I, I want to combine the two, two of them so that's my next uh, yeah my next project is to to make uh, those go together like yeah making little exercise with hooping for surfing mm. So after I totally tried to persuade Elizabeth to come to Australia and surf the breaks here without a wetsuit on, I took a moment to honor the awesome, amazing human being that she is. Full conversation, I've been telling you how much you inspire me and uh, how, how much I just love your adventurous spirit and then how you share that with others. Despite, I'm just going to, if, People miss the part where you said that you live in an area that does not have sun at all for one month. I'm just going to, you know, repeat that bit because <laughs> they're real challenges, big challenges, things that you have to navigate and, and understand your emotions, your feelings, um, you know, finding space and time to still stay adventurous with life. So I just want to like, just praise you for all of that. And thank you so much for for sharing that and and just being so open and and then inviting other people to do that with you to have this experience that they would never otherwise probably have in their life as I said bucket list experience to be able to come and hang out with you and go on a hoop retreat and potentially some surfing in there I don't know <laughs> And to wrap things up, I asked Elizabeth where we can find her. I was with her on the journey of her creating her website and watched as she built something from nothing, a true entrepreneur and an amazing creative spirit. So definitely go and check out her websites, follow her on Instagram and just cheer her on because she really is doing amazing work in this world. My Facebook page is Hu Rockering Dama. And who Rockering Dama is actually, it, Rockering is hoop. And Rockering Dama is like the hoop lady. And then locally, her people are always introducing themselves by saying she and then uh, your name. So I would be she Elizabeth. I'm she Elizabeth. So I would be she, the hoop lady. That's who, who Rockering Dama. So she contacted contacted me on Facebook and wrote like, oh yeah, I heard there's a hooper around and do you want to meet? And I was like, yes, let's meet in an hour, you know, because <laughs> so exciting, so exciting when other hoopers are coming by. And I just had Emma Kenna visiting also and that was amazing. So if you do come, please contact me because 
we're in need of each other up here. We need some inspiration from the hoop world and yeah. And I'm also who rockering down at Instagram. And then uh, on uh, the web page for the hoop retreat is hoopandhike.no. So it's hoop and just an n hike.no. So that's where you can find me. And I really, really love when people are getting in touch. And I had some emails from people last year, from also from the other side of the world, saying that, oh, I see what you're doing. And I really think it's a cool thing. And that's another nice thing also to, you know, drop a line if you see someone inspiring you. Let them know that they are inspiring you. That's another advice. Don't keep back on... on um, encouraging each other. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, for taking the time to hang out with me online. And it's always a total joy to watch you grow and expand and share with many more. I hope that the Hoopers of the world take some time to come and visit you in Norway or come to your Hoop and Hike retreat. Now this series, this episode is by no means an ad for Hoop Love Coach training, but we do have an incredible training and community that we have built of Hoop teachers all over the world. And over the next couple of weeks and months, you're going to get a chance to hang out with them here on this YouTube channel and see how amazing their life is and the brilliant work that they're doing in this world. If it is part of your journey, if it's on your path to join us for a Hoop Love Coach training, we do them a couple of times a year and you can always check out all the details on hooplovecoaching.com. Until next week, until the next episode of Yes, I'm a Hoop Teacher, big hoop love from me to you.